Good evening, people. Watch from a 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That's the simple gospel. That's how you're saved. That's how you're kept saved. Nothing else. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. Least any man should boast. We don't come to Christ no other way except believing. It's grace that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's grace. That's salvation. Period. No other way. Uh, I've had a few people ask me questions. And I get questions every day. And I don't mind that. I try to answer as many as I can. But the one question that came to mind was... Um, And people get on me about knocking the Pentecostal faith. I'm going to be honest with you. I grew up in that denomination and it is false. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not knocking them. I'm not knocking anybody who's in that. I pray that people come out of that and see the real truth. And so this one particular subscriber came out of that and he was ruined. He was, he was damaged from that. And I talked to him and I told him, you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourself, not least any man should boast. They pushed works on him. They pushed a lot of stuff on him, which was wrong. Uh, they pushed backsliding. They pushed, uh, yeah, you could lose your salvation. They pushed fear. And that is what the Pentecostal movement does. Now, let me get something straight before I get letters saying, oh, you're wrong about this, you're wrong. Look, I didn't grow up in it. I was in it for 28 years. I've seen it. I've been to even different states in different Pentecostal churches. They do the same thing. They instill fear in you. Let me tell you something, fear, and I use the acronym F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. They put fear in the average person, and it's wrong. Once you get saved, once you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Ephesians 4.30 says you are sealed until the day of redemption. There is no way you're going to lose your salvation. You are sealed until the day of redemption. And people say, oh, well, that's just a uh, license to sin. No, it's not. Because the Holy Spirit changes you. When you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you sealed and saved until the day of redemption, the Holy Spirit changes you. Folks, this, this gospel is simple. Man makes it impossible. All the time. Man makes it impossible. They want to give you 12 steps to this, 12 steps to this. Oh, you better do this, you better do that, or you're going, you're going to hell. I grew up with that. <laughs> I grew up with it all the time. And it got to the point where the Holy Spirit simply said, that's enough. This is the true gospel. You are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Period. No other way. And that's what I'm here to give you. The simple truth about the simplicity of the gospel. Period. Because there is... The only requirement is believing in what Christ did at the cross. You don't no longer have to live. And I don't know, I'm speaking to somebody. Because you no longer have to live your life in fear, worrying about whether or not you're going to get uh, left behind. No, you're not going to get left behind if you have accepted Christ as Savior by believing in his blood. That's the will of the Father. To accept the Son and what he did at the cross. It's not rocket science. 
You don't need a 12-step program. Heck, you don't even need... <laughs> you, I'm just saying, <laughs> you don't really need a pastor. You just need to know the truth. It's believing. Now that I got that over with, you will never lose your salvation. That's another thing. I want to tell you what I put on my blog. Folks, I've got some articles on my blog, watchwoman65.com. You need to go there and read what I've got. And I'm going to give you one hint. You will not like it. Not at all. I've gotten these articles and they are disturbing. And I cannot, I can't do them on here. But I want you to go to the blog and read these articles because they are, they are disturbing and they're real. I'm going to give you this right now, though. This is off of, um, this is off of now, um, end times headlines. It says commercial airline pilots keep reporting UFOs over Canada. Now, again, I use this scenario with the UFOs because these aliens or UFOs that they're seeing, I don't know. They're demonic, which is a perfect example of how they're going to use the rapture. They're going to say, oh, they got alien abducted or they got this. You notice, like I had put in, um, I think I did a, a video a few days ago about UFOs. And that's going to, that's going to be the basis of it. They're going to use that to explain away the rapture. Further deception. Commercial airline pilots are continuing to report a slew of UFO sightings over Canada. Several of these were documented, uh, documented by uh, Vice who reported on the morning of May 30th, 2016. One Air Canada Express flight from Montreal to Toronto reported it had crossed an unidentified flying object, round in shape, flying at an approximate speed of more than 550 kilometers. Now, you know, I, I could see if one person was reporting something like this, but when you have several, that's a problem. This is not nothing to sneeze at. That's the art of the video that I did the other day. The Pentagon is now coming out with the truth. This is how close we are to the rapture. Praise God. It goes on to say over 8,000 feet above Lake Ontario on November 14th of that year, two crew members were injured when a Porter Airlines plane dove to avoid hitting an object that appeared to be solid and shaped like an upright donut or inner tube. This has been going on for several months now. And every you can't tell me that this is just a few people. That this is just one or two people report. This has been being reported a lot by thousands of people. Vice stated that they have discovered thousands of these similar reports after combing through thousands of which include two WestJet flights near British Columbia's Okanagan. Oh, Okanagan. Okanagan. Valley. <laughs> Okanagan. That's what's funny. Sorry. The Okanagan uh, Valley and that allegedly witnessed, listen to this, a bright white strobe type light above them on the night of March 16, 2017, a pre-dawn and a pre-dawn January 10, 2015 encounter outside Regina, Saskatchewan, where multiple aircraft reported where they are saying was a very large object with a small white light in the middle surrounded by a halo that appeared to descend from above 41,000 feet. Now, why am I reporting this? Why am I giving this to you now? Because we're closer to the rapture. The more you hear about UFOs, the closer to the rapture we are. You know why? I said it a few minutes ago. They're going to, dis they're going to discount the rapture 
and say that it was alien abductions. And they're probably going to say that we were all diseased. I'll leave it like that. Like I said, go read the blogs. You'd be surprised what's on my blogs right now. Pilots are probably not reporting about 90% of the things they're seeing because they know it could have lengthy, lengthy career implications. Former Royal Canadian Air Force pilot Jack uh, Williams told Vice World News. For most pilots, he said it's not worth it because no one would believe him. And it's true. Who would believe you? That's why I believe that each of these guys saw what they reported. Another fascinating report came from January 6, 2019, where a crew with medical transport of Vanguard Air Care reported an inexplicable bright light that followed them at the same altitude and speed over northern Manitoba when no aircraft were reported in their vicinity. This is real. Something's going on. One researcher and filmmaker, Matthew Hayes said, Canadians have been reporting the same types of things unabated since 1940s, Hayes said. Historically, it has also been incredibly challenged to get the Canadian government to talk about it. Compare that with the U.S., where officials seem much more eager and ready to discuss the topic. That's interesting. Folks, we're headed for the rapture, and it's time to get saved. I gave you the simple, simple gospel. Now, let me put it like this. You're left behind. That's your fault. You have yourself to blame. Because I've given you the rapture, and other watchmen and women have done the same thing. I've given you the salvation message, and I've given you the case of the rapture. We're on our way out of here. We're on our way out of here. Now, do I believe something's going to happen after the rapture? <laughs> There's a lot of things that's going to happen after the rapture. I'll give you another hint. Go look at the blogs. I'm going to put this in the description box so you can read it. Um... I have to leave here shortly. I have to go pick up my uh, son from work. But in the meantime, I will bid you good night. And thank you for your support.